Hey, what's up everyone? Aubrey Trades. It is the end of July, so I figured why not do a month end recap and a little bit of a trading self evaluation, right? We know we've had some uh, pretty bad, pretty bad red days this month. Total net profit now sitting at, if you add today's heart shattering hundred and twenty odd dollar loss that puts us at a overall loss of eight hundred and twenty ish dollars or forty percent of our initial investment boo 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 that's my stop out right so I need to turn things around okay and if we go to 30 day range 450 of that has been from this month alone. Oh Jesus guys, that like, that hurts. That hurts a lot. Uh, we can see, you know, max consecutive losing trades, 15. Max winners by nine. Not as important. If I can keep my losers smaller than my winners. Largest loser and largest winner, about the same. At least the loser's not bigger. <laughs> um, but still, unacceptable. I need to really, really work on getting this better. Uh, largest losing trade was $127 by the largest winning trade, only 65. My largest loser was twice as, twice as much as my largest winner. Yeah, I can't have that. Can't have that at all. Uh, percent loss, percent gain on average is about the same. Got to chip that down. Average loser five, average winner four. Okay. And so that tells me on average, I'm, I need to improve my average only slightly. The big issue is that the outliers are too extreme. The dollar difference between these being s as small as it is, like it's really these outliers. It's the fact that this largest loser is twice as much as the largest winner. And I'm sure there are some other outliers too that probably heavily outweigh what their, uh, what the other outliers in the winning column are. So now I wanna head over into Thinkorswim and go to our overall profits and losses for the year. And I wanna look at some of our largest losers. I wanna look at some of the largest winners. Um, see what I'm doing wrong, reinforce some of these lessons that I've been outlining in the trade reviews, and go over some of the winners. And maybe I can refine the strategy moving forward. Uh, so if, you know, if I do nothing, if I change nothing other than stop taking the losing types of trades and stick more to the winning types of trades, you know, <laughs> maybe that'll turn things around. Uh, starting with the losers, AOYI. Uh, I was doing OTC first green day setups. That's what, and I was pretty exclusive to looking for those setups at this time. I thought I was adding to a winner. Well, I was adding to a winner. And I was hearing about like pyramiding in whatever. I took a bigger position. I was sure of the gap. Um, I had a moment. I had a moment at the end of the day where I could have I could have exited and I was thinking, I've got $70 profit on the trade at that time, right? So, you know, with about $1,000 in this trade, I could have gone out, you know, my P&L was like 70 bucks, so it was pretty good, you know, 7%. Could have taken the base hit, uh, no. And so I decided I was gonna hold for the gap. I took another $595, the dip into the close, and then I dumped it all out at 5199 right here. 
Get all out right here. Gap down. So, that's actually... I, that might be when I stopped doing the OTCs, right? I think that I think that really scared me out of out of that strategy, and that was uh, back to here. That was 175 bucks gone. Hmm. And then you know what's funny though is on the next day, look at that. The next day I could have made money. Moving on, we got BRGO. BRGO. Oof. Now what was I trying to do here? 40,000 shares at 2 cents, so there's an OTC. It's 10 a.m. Oh, well that, that by itself is, why am I taking a 10 a.m. trade on an, o on an OTC gapper? No, like, yeah, let you know, yeah, this is ridiculous. If I missed this, right, if I'm watching this, I mean, there's plenty of time, plenty of time. And then the next thing to do would be, would be this initial bounce, if, if you really wanted something, but not this, like, it's doing nothing at this point, it's just consolidating. It's just as likely to go up or down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, IGC. I don't know why that didn't stick out to me. Maybe because I knew that was dumb. Uh, IGC is the next uh, biggest loser. And I think that was a recent one, too. I don't know, it was from the other day. Oh. Uh, oh, goodness. Look at this. Okay. IGC. So this is recent, and this is a this is a pattern that I'm noticing. Like, okay, I sit down for pre market. I, uh, I have moments where I I catch the uh, I catch the momentum turn, right? You can you can see it on the active trader. All of a sudden, this will start flashing around, and. Uh, you you see the bid prop like so this might be 69 <laughs> this might be 69 and this might all of a sudden go to like a thousand right on the on the buy side and you're like oh shoot that's like the pressure turning up for an explosive move you can hop on the back of that and catch this pop and that's literally what's happening here but but one i'm letting myself get shaken out way too easy um, because I'm following a one minute chart and I'm not just letting a five minute pattern play out, for example, right? So if I'm getting in at 299, first, uh, first five minute candle to make a new high type of thing, your exit is the first five minute candle to make a new low. Technically, you would be stopping out here in the 360s. If you follow that idea, Right, and then let's go. Uh, what's what's three sixty divided by two ninety nine? A nice twenty, a nice twenty percent move. That could have yielded with the hundred shares. Goodness. So then, so then I'm just watching. I'm like, okay, I missed this move. I don't want to play this because all of a sudden it's like, okay, well it's extended now from two ninety nine. You know, it it feels like it's more ripe for a pullback, and then you you know, you know you're setting up for this market open thing, and you don't know which way it's gonna go. And so what happens? I wait on the tenth minute. I take a hundred shares at three ninety four, and I think, what? I'm uh, I'm getting in on a pullback or something, maybe. Maybe a um, VWAP reclaim type of thing. Then we move. I add 300 shares at 430. I sell 400 shares at 385. 
Wow. And that is like bad luck. <laughs> I was anticipating a follow up, a follow up move. And I might, and I might have been, yeah, I might have been anticipating this was going to be the start of a 9.45 move. And then also, you always hear in pre-market prep, 9.45 a.m. or later. And I'm taking this loss before 9.45. And I think that's worth, I think that's worth taking note of. Like, maybe if I do nothing but adhere to that rule, you know, how many, how many bad trades would I, would I save myself from? Right? Okay, so then the day continues. 10.45, going into that uh, 11, 12, 1, 2 p.m. window. I'm doing 284, 293. I'm, and I'm, I'm anticipating, I'm anticipating this thing going on, right? I add 500 shares at 302. <laughs> And I sell 501 shares at 303. Oh, that's funny. That, so that ends up just being like the quickest little scalp. Oh, that's funny. Oh, goodness. And that was it for the day. And I can't imagine that was anywhere close <laughs> close to um undoing undoing this nonsense yeah god that was such a burn so overall takeaway if you miss if if you miss this move for the pre so, so take away one, take away one, relax. If you catch the momentum flip in pre at 5 a.m., if you're able to catch a nice 5 a.m. move, maybe let the five minute trend play out, right? Maybe, maybe go a little bigger. I actually personally think if, what happens is I take a couple good trades early in the morning and then I size up because I'm, I get overconfident, right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm on a hot streak. You know, I spotted the momentum. And I think it's going to happen. And what's worse, sometimes I think it's going to happen and it's like 1030 and it's like midday and I'm like, <laughs> or whatever. And I'm just like, here we go. 500 shares and then it, and then it goes down a couple cents and I'm like no and I wipe out everything and more from the earlier wins that's one thing I think I can work on um my early my early betting is is seems to be insanely better than this let's see if that confirms as we go back to our review MDIA. Uh, MDIA. Another recent one. I like that we had a couple um, OTC losses and we're getting some listed losses. It's not specific to one, apparently. Okay. Here's one big one. Oh, that's a good trade. All right. Here we go. 100 shares buying at 12.01. Okay, so hold on. Oh, let's get some con context. Let's get some context in here, right? Okay, so you had this stock closed at the highs. This is when MDIA went dummy crazy. And then it does nothing but fade. Like, okay, I feel like this is something now that I would know better of. 
Because this wouldn't really interest me in pre-market if I just see it kind of like still fading from yesterday. You know, maybe you catch this, but I don't know. I don't know. 13 to, I mean, that could be something decent, but anyway, so I'm getting in here and it's one, two, okay, it's, it's, it's on the 945 candle. I'm buying at 1201. So we're on the upswing. I'm trying to find 1201. Okay, so I'm buying here. I'm thinking we're doing some basing. You know, we would have opened here. We're green candling up. All right, cool. Nope. Boom. Stopped out. That I think that's appropriate. Honestly, I think that's uh, that's just unfortunate. Because if I'm getting it, like, what else? What else do you stop out by if not low of day? And eleven, I missed uh. Jesus. So the low of this candle is 1078, 1075. So I I stopped out pretty good. You know, low low new low is the only place to stop out in my opinion this early into a trade. Okay. I uh I accept that. I accept that. Hmm. Here's a, another one where I lost. This was small though. By in the first five minutes, adding on the dip, realizing, oh, oh sh shoot, it's not, it's not a dip. I just made a mistake. Um, pre 945, like, what are you doing? That's what that tells me. Pre 945, what are you doing? And I lost a hundred bucks on that? There's no way. There's other trades. There's other trades in there I'm not seeing. That's a hundred share? Oh. Right, a hundred shares, though. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> Duh. That's like a thousand dollars. I feel that. Yeah. So then the other one is uh why are you betting a hundred shares of an eleven dollar stock, taking a thousand dollar position? Next, E R Y P. So that's the top. What one, two, three, four, five? I think top five of each. E R Y P. Oh, that was freaking today. E R Y P was today. <laughs> okay, word. 100 shares. Ugh. An idiot loss. What a, can I can I tell a story? Actually, can I tell a story? I make this move. And then like here I'm on the phone with somebody. And they know I trade. I'm on the phone with somebody and I'm sitting here in this candle on the one minute chart. I'm here in this candle. Can I show it to you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look, look over uh, down here. We're sitting here and I'm like literally have this. I had a trend line drawn. I feel like something's going to happen. I'm noticing the activity here on the active on the trade ladder. Right. I think that's what they call that. And I'm like, I don't know, though. You know, it might not run that much though. Like, I think the better entry definitely would have been for the bounce, but those are tough, blah, blah, blah. Oh, well then don't do it. You missed your entry, you missed your entry. Like, and my instinct was like, let me just take a small one. You know, let me just see, um, let me put a hundred in there, right? Let me make the hundred share bet. And then I'll just like take the pop, right? But instead, I was like, I'll trade the confirmation of the pop. Fine. You know, I did the confirmation of the pop. 
and it kind of like came back down into here and I had a couple seconds to take 10 cents out of it. But then I was like, oh wait, let me go for the five minute move. Come on now. Come on now. And then today, <laughs> and then this is the halt, right? Uh, about 259. This is just averaging this together. This was like three different things. Buy, uh, like a buy and a sell for a loss and then a buy back on the way up is what this was. And then I got out. I think I could have like roughly broke even or maybe lessened the loss significantly if I got rid of both here at 907. But, but I was like, maybe we get another halt up. <laughs> nope. Out at 8.20, not thinking, not, I'm so emotional during this time, the range on these candles, like this doesn't look like much, but this is, like this wick, this tiny wick right here, that's 9.50, 9.50, this is, a, this is a whole dollar move, man. Anyway, I'm so emotional at this point. I don't think, wait for the VWAP reclaim. Like, it's gonna, you know, wait for the bounce. You might have an opportunity. All right. So, two biggest losers uh, from OTC land and two big losers from NASDAQ world. Yikes. NAOV. Where did things go wrong? NAOV. Breaking the 945 rule. Breaking the 945 rule. Man, that's tough. Okay. If you're not positioned from pre, don't go 945. No go until 945. Jesus. Okay, over here. What's happening? <sighs> Buying pre 945. 200 shares at 173. 200 shares at 178. That's good. 100 share at 79. 100 share at 98. Sick. Sick. A thousand shares at 180. A thousand shares at 176. Man. Man, oh man, oh man. Goodness. Make this one minute candles. Can I see this on a one minute chart? Jesus. Look at this. Ugh. That's in the same minute. How hilarious. How hilarious. <clears throat> you know what it is? It's because I knew. As soon as I I couldn't help. I couldn't help and be like, thousand shares. Oh yeah. Like, you know, I got two good ones. I got two good ones. Let me get greedy. Let me go for a third. My goodness. Ugh. Ugh. Man. Man. Three trades. Three trades. And this one I'm not as mad. Okay, so break breaking the 945 rule. Yes, right? Yes. <laughs> Is this the part where I make excuses for my bad behavior? <laughs> But <laughs> breaking the 945 rule, yes. But this was specifically reading, reading this active trade ladder. I saw, I waited, I saw the moment, I saw the turn, I took it. I took the turn. So that gives me some, some 
positive feelings, right? Like, I like that I'm, I'm able to spot this a little easier now. So hopefully that comes to my aid going into July, right? Hopefully I can use that successfully. Don't take a third trade. Don't take a third trade, especially when we're coming into the late part of the morning. Especially if you're coming into the into the late part of the morning and it's looking and it's looking like a fade. Right? If you're coming in onto the 945 candle. Nah. And this feels like one of those moments where it's like, you know, you're 10 minutes in the day. You have this. You have this like indecision, this pent up feeling. And then phew, if you're already this far up, you know, if you're pushing twos, if you're pushing twos on the uh, on the five minute chart, like. I don't know. I don't know. I just think at this point it feels like it feels extended. I would be waiting for something. Anyway, but man, what a dumb, dumb, dumb move that was. If I only stopped doing that three sixty four, three twenty seven. This, I just was like, yeah, um, this is not happening. Let me get out. Proud of this, basically scratch. Not bad. This is where it... I tried to, I tried to like, oh, this is the bottom. No. Okay. Do I want to go? Do I want to keep going? <laughs> I feel like that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Top six. I need to feel good about myself now. <laughs> so... <laughs> E E G I, you know I can't I can't just sit here tearing myself apart. Uh, so let's go 180 days. Yeah, yeah. This was just a beautiful setup. Specifically looking for the OTC scan. The OTC gapper scan. And I was specifically looking for first green day cappers. Damn. And that's what that was. Yeah. Had a scan specifically for a stock. Matched all the criteria. You know, this was the big first green day. This was, you know... This was big too before this before this day. But the fact that this had volume that was greater than these three days here, that gave me the high conviction. And I took the benefit of that. Yeah, that was great. MJWL is gonna be the same thing. Another another instance. So I was I was scanning. Man, this was just the freaking start of this run, though. Like a moment of appreciation. Ugh. How beautiful this was. Jesus. And to think. Anyway. Uh so this was a, you know, again, an intentional scan for the first green day pattern. I liked that this was the first big green day on this uptrend and it had big volume comparable to this big day when it did this move. So I was like, maybe this is the start of a bigger version of the same kind of pattern, right? Took my long into the close. You know, I didn't like that it was up so far from VWAP, so I waited, bought on the dip right before close 12,500 shares at 3 cents sold 
12,500 cents at 4 cents and and I missed out cuz this went to 7. Jesus. What a dunce. And like I said, this was the start of a multi-day run. Look at this. Going as high as 26 cents. 26 cents. Ugh. Man. Man. MSRT. Okay, let's take a second. Let's appreciate the difference between these top two winners, top two losers. We go to losers. We had one, two, three, four hundred plus dollar losers. That is unacceptable. That is crazy. How insane these losers are. Winners. Two hundred plus dollar losers. Literally twice as many. Twice as many. And then the next biggest winner is fifty dollars. Two fifties, a forty, a thirty, a twenty, a twenty, a twenty, a twenty. Okay. Anyway, MSRT, next biggest winner. OTC. Uh, definitely not as nice a setup, I don't think, as the other one. But volume was just as big as the this day's volume. That made me feel better about it. And then I sold the next day at 6.5 in. Did I make the wick? Nope. I made the open. I sold right at the open. I bet that's what that was. I bet that's what that was. I sold right at the open. Nice. But still a good winner. SGMA. Believe SGMA to be a listed stock. Okay, so I'm taking 30 shares at 743. Playing for the continued is what that was. Stopping out at 706. Re-entering at 723. Cause so I'm like, oh, just kidding. We're gonna we're about to we're about to make this move. 100 shares at 770. Hundred shares at seven seventy, picking up a hundred shares at seven sixty one. After the VWAP confirmation test, I remember this. Yeah, it was successful. And then I sold. Oh yeah, that was such a nice play. Sold into that for the retest. And when it was kind of like, eh, I'm not sure it's going to do it, boom. Because I already knew I was in for 230 shares. Nah, at that point, nah, I just took it. I feel that. I do feel that. This was such a crap loss, though. <laughs> 40, <laughs> losing like 40 cents a share on this. Oof. Ouch. Okay. Sigma. HTZGQ, OTC that I held overnight, first green day setup, 619 out of it, and was the start of a larger uptrend. HTZGQ going as high as the nines. Hmm. Okay. I think I have uh, enough to make some conclusions SBFM another OTC oh where did I trade you SBFM hmm would you have been another first green day setup 2000 shares of 23 cents yeah into a close 
selling 2,000 shares at 25 cents, which ran as high as 31. Okay, I think there's a pretty obvious conclusion here, and that is I have done substantially better on OTC first green day setups than I've done on anything else. Very interesting. Uh, in my mind, I liked Listed because, well, I switched to Listed because I wanted to go into very, very small size and just testing a bunch of stuff out and different like patterns out and stuff and not wanting to pay the OTC commission. But man, it's, you can't, you can't ignore the data. Like, at we want, first of all, one, we went through less winners than we did losers. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, we did the same amount. Okay. So we went through just as many. It, the majority of those were OTCs and the biggest ones were OTCs. We had one, two, HT and SB. Jesus. So that's four out of six. Four out of six of my account's biggest winners have been OT OTC stocks. So going into July, I know it's a summer market. I know it's a summer market. Spies dipping around all time highs now again. Let's see what Monday brings. We're still at the highs. We still got some coronavirus uncertainty in the market. OTCs aren't as hot as they were on those big on those biggest winners, but I think I gotta I think I gotta switch back. I think I gotta really seriously every day search for OTC first green day breakouts. At this point, at this point, that's what the data shows. And granted, you know, I have 200 trades in, right? So I'm very new, right? It's not a lot, but I think it's enough to start extrapolating some data out of. And I think that this is so just in my face that I can't ignore it. So I need to be way more serious about searching for these for, uh, OTC first green day setups. I need to be very serious about searching for these OTC first green day setups. And I need to take these guys, the listed stocks, much, much lighter, much lighter. I mean, I can practice, but I can't be, I can't be taking a thousand dollar positions in some of these NASDAQ moves, you know? The only one that worked out on was Sigmatron, and that was specifically, that was specifically like catching the momentum and not, not getting greedy, not getting greedy for a continued motion. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's what it's going to be. So anyway, those are my thoughts. I'm going to keep all of that in mind, develop my strategy for July around all of these insights that we just made, primarily going to focus on OTC first green day patterns, and I'm really going to size down on the NASDAQ stocks. And when I trade them, I'm specifically going to look for the turn on the active trade ladder, and I'm only going to take the quick piece of the move keeping in mind that anything before 945 i'm sticking to one minute candles and if i miss something do not chase wait for the confirmation move ideally after 945 let me know in the comments below how you're doing and what lessons you've learned this month that you're going to use to improve your trading i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching aubrey out.